Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If there is one gift that I think all reasonable people could agree we would like this world to receive a little bit more of, I think it would be reconciliation. We look around us in this world and we see so much strife, so much turmoil, so much hatred, violence, hardship. Just turn on the television, watch the news, or watch any of the fictional shows with which we entertain ourselves, and you see this played out over and over again. This sort of grasping after something and fighting against others to try to get it. We could all use a little bit more reconciliation, couldn't we? And not just in the way that humans relate to other humans, but in the ways that individual humans relate to this world, because so often we chase after those things that we think will bring us peace, that we think will bring us comfort and meaning. We chase after wealth or accomplishment or good looks or a perfect family or whatever it is that we think will reconcile us to ourselves. This constant striving, constant fighting for something that eludes us. I think that in the relationships between people, and even within our own hearts, we long for reconciliation. And that's what Paul teaches us about in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 today. And he teaches us, I think, two main points that we've just really got to understand when it comes to reconciliation. The first is that we are reconciled to God through Christ. And the second is that we are now ambassadors of that reconciliation into all the world. So let's look at those one by one. Starting with verse 17, if you want to follow along on the back of your bulletin, you certainly can. Paul tells us, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. I'm not sure there's anything that highlights for us how important that is quite so well as the topic of reconciliation. Try to walk out these doors and live at perfect peace with all the people. And then when you come back a week from now, let me know how well you did. Try to walk out those doors and live at perfect peace within your own heart for one week and come back and let me know how you did. The reality is, as we seek after reconciliation, it becomes more and more obvious to us how much it eludes us how hard it is to grasp. I'm not just talking about a, a goal like peace in the Middle East, where there's been fighting for so long. I'm talking about even just peace within our own hearts, within our own homes, and our own workplaces, and our own schools. Just contentment, hope, and certainty in the midst of a life of turmoil. We can't do it, can we? We try. We might make some gains over the course of a whole lifetime. We might progress a bit. But we're never going to end up where we want to end up. So it comes as the best possible news to us when Paul tells us that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. For it's in that old Adam, we sang about old Adam in the baptismal hymn, that old Adam, that old sinful self that lives all of the pride and all of the greed and all of the selfishness and all of the willingness to hold a grudge and all of the hardships, that's where it lives, in this old self of ours. That's why baptism is such a beautiful thing. Because when we are baptized, we are baptized into Christ's death. The old is gone. And we are raised up with him in his resurrection. For if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. And the new has come. This cannot come about by our own efforts, for they are flawed, they are stained, they fall short. Instead, as Paul says, verse 18, all this is from God. It's a free gift. Just like when the father welcomed back the prodigal son, he hadn't earned it, he had earned condemnation. But the father gave him grace and mercy and poured out his gifts on him. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself. Now what's that word mean, reconciliation? I've already said it more times today than I've probably said it in the last six months. What does it mean? Well, in accounting, it's pretty simple, right? 
You take the numbers in the books and you make sure they line up. And if there's any reason they don't line up, you figure out where the problem is until they do. In relationships, it's much the same thing. You look at a relationship that's out of whack, that's not lined up, people or groups that are divided, and you try to figure out what's causing the division. And then you try to address that problem so they can reconnect, so they can be reunited, reconciled, so they line up again. But the problem is, what was it that had separated us from God? It was ourselves. We were the problem. For in us lives all of that sin and greed and pride that I talked about. We're the problem. So how can the problem be fixed when we are the problem? Jesus became one of us. He died the death. He took the condemnation that we had deserved and offered instead his perfect life. The old is gone. The new has come. All this is from God, who in Christ reconciled the world to himself. That's the first thing we have to understand. If we long for reconciliation within our world, if we long for reconciliation within our own hearts, it's not going to be found by our own efforts. It's not going to be found by our own good intentions, no matter how pure we might try to make them. It's not going to be found by our own programs or our own attempts. That's part of the old nature. The old is gone. Instead, it's found by joining with Christ in his death and rising with him into his new life so that it's no longer we who live, but Christ who lives within us, the hope of glory. It's the first thing we have to understand about reconciliation, that every one of you has been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Christ's death on the cross was sufficient for all the sins you ever committed and all the sins this sinful world could ever commit. His death was greater than all of that. And he has joined you with him by his word, by his sacraments. You are made new. And now, as Paul said, this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Just like when we're given a beautiful gift, we want to tell others about it. We have been given a brand new life, and we've now been entrusted with that message. We are reconciled with God, not because of any efforts of our own, but because of what God himself has done in Jesus Christ. And we bear that message of reconciliation into the whole world. We do it both with our words and with our deeds. Because as long as we remain in our old selves, we remain separated. We remain turned in toward ourselves. We remain self-centered. But if we've been reconciled to Christ... It's not possible for you and I to not be reconciled. If Christ has drawn me into himself and has drawn you into himself, then we are unified there with Christ. Divisions amongst us ought not to exist. Truly, in heaven's eyes, they do not. And this becomes our message then to the entire world, that the entire world has been reconciled to God through Christ. We are ambassadors like when we send an ambassador from the United States to another country, what's the purpose? It's to show our good intent toward that country. The ambassador is supposed to deliver our messages to that country. And by their behavior, is supposed to represent our country to that country. We're now Christ's ambassadors here in this world. We bear Christ's message on our lips. And God willing, and by his strength, our lives bear testimony to who he is. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. So we implore you, this is Paul speaking to the church in Corinth, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. And then one of the most miraculous verses in all of Scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus, who was perfectly sinless, became sin, so that we who were sinful can become 
his righteousness. Our very identity has been changed. The old is gone, the new has come. And now we are the ambassadors. We go into all the world, as the Isaiah passage said, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among all the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. You see, the first thing we have to know is that we are reconciled with God. I am reconciled with God. You are reconciled with God through Christ. And the second thing we have to remember is that now we are ambassadors of that reconciliation. When you leave these doors, heck, even when you're inside these doors, you are ambassadors of that reconciliation. But when you go out into your home, into your workplace, into your community, into your school, into any activity that you participate in. You are now an ambassador of Christ. You bear Him within you. You bear His message on your lips. And your actions are to be a testimony to, to, to who He is, to what He does. And that message is not just supposed to be for our closest friends, it's supposed to be for our enemies. It's supposed to go all around the world. Because Jesus' last instruction to his disciples was, Go ye therefore into all the world and make disciples of all nations. So you see the way this works? The first truth we have to know, we are reconciled. You and I are reconciled. We look inward at that new gift of life that we have been given in Christ, and then we look outward. We look to share that gift wherever we can, in ways both great and small. Because we have been reconciled to Christ and now he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And just as he is the one who has accomplished that within our own hearts, he is the one who will accomplish it through us in all of the world. And may the peace of our Lord which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds firmly in this truth in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.